gonna lift your voice and sing hallelujah 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 sing hallelujah Exalted above all gods. You're above every other God. We bless your name. Thank you for your precious son, Jesus. Your word says that all nations will bow before him. We choose to bow right now because he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Blessed be your name. Thank you for your awesome presence in this place. May this anointing we feel here right now touch everybody watching us to the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, mothers, fathers, partners in ministry, those that God has used to touch our lives tremendously and those who pray for us we'd like to welcome you right now to a live broadcast my name is Apostle Joseph Helen coming to you live from Nairobi Kenya this is Trapeza TV the table of heavenly contents your life is going to be transformed tonight as I teach you on a topic that I taught many many months ago and I felt in my spirit that I should remind you of this topic it's called Orma Wisdom or my wisdom this is wisdom for money it's monday and i teach about wisdom for finances i teach you things that will help you become rich prosperous and successful so that you can fund the gospel of jesus because the days are coming to an end jesus is about to return and we must preach this gospel to every corner of this world before jesus is revealed to take us to the place where we shall be for eternity Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me take this opportunity to welcome my sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, partners in ministry. Those of you who've been able to join us tonight, let me take this opportunity to welcome you before I carry on with the, our message for tonight. So I can see my son, Tero. Always number one. I love you. You're just amazing. And I can see uh, uh, my daughter, Christine Lees, Jeroge, 
Love you so much. How are you doing? She, she, she's been now. I can see she texted there as Apostle Joseph Helen. Yes, you're an apostle. God bless you, my daughter. So you can carry my name. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Yeah, she's, she's one of our admins in the, uh, in the ministry. So sometimes when they're looking at our Facebook page, they end up typing as if they were me. And that's actually quite good. I like it. Glory to Jesus. You know, they say that um, that fruits don't fall too far from the tree. Yeah? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Nice Quinga, saying hallelujah, your name is freedom, your name is power. Glory to God. Can I put my mic away? All right, great. I have to wait for my engineers to give me a go-ahead to let go of this orange microphone. Glory to God. I can see Nelly's online. God bless you, Nelly. She says glory to God. And I can see my daughter, Ndaisi Kwinga. Yes, I remember Ndaisi Kwinga a couple of days ago sending me a message that she was involved in a road accident. But you know something, I pray for every single one of you, so it's impossible for any part of your body to be scratched, even if the devil wanted to. So she says she has a testimony. She says, I have a testimony. I was in an accident, three cars, with three cars and minimal damage to a car. We were hit by a matatu. Now in Nairobi, Kenya, a matatu is a, a small minivan or a small mini bus that carries people, that ferries people. In some countries, they call them taxis, but in Nairobi, they call them matatu. So she says we were hit by a matatu that had broken doors and broken windshield. And she says, I kept hearing Apostle Joseph Helen's voice saying, pray, pray, pray. And she says she thanks God. Glory to Jesus forevermore. I'm glad my daughter is not hurt. I'm also glad that your car only had minimal damages. But I'm releasing grace upon you that even as you repair those minimal damages, your finances will not be affected. There's going to be a supernatural release of money your way. And it's going to go to the extent I'm actually seeing you getting another car. And I'm seeing you being lifted up economically. And your finances are going to double and triple. Your income is going to double and triple. In the mighty name of Jesus. Had the devil known who you are and who you are connected to, he would not have tried to attack you. Now I'm choosing out of my office as an apostle to reward you. I'm sending Angel Gamaliel to reward you for the suffering that you have experienced. Your entire family is going to be blessed financially. I release it upon you right now. I dispatch all the angels that work with me in the area of finances to come your way and to double and to triple Hallelujah. your income in the mighty name of Jesus and to cause miracle money to come your way and to cause sources of income that you don't expect to just open up like an avalanche, like a floodgate, like a, like a truth gate. Hallelujah. A sluice gate. Coming your way. So finances are going to overwhelm you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You'll never suffer ever again. Glory to God. And if you're also expecting a blessing, please say, I also receive my double and triple income. If you don't have a job, receive your job right now. There's an anointing for that. Receive your job right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. I can see Julia, she's watching. God bless you, my daughter. Hallelujah. Daisy says, I thank God for Apostle Joseph Helen and his prayers over our lives. I appreciate and thank God for you. Oh, I love you, my dear. Nothing can touch you. The Bible says, not a bone of your body shall be broken. Hallelujah. He's given angels charge over you. You will not touch your foot against a stone. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Betty George, God bless you. Happy to see you again. Hallelujah. Rona Mwaka says, praise God, my beautiful family. Uganda must be as cold as Kenya tonight. We are freezing as well. Beautiful worship today. Bless you. Yeah, it's quite cold. We have a fire in our fireplace right now. It's keeping our um, studio warm. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Christine Lees now has appeared as Christine Lees before she was texting as Apostle Helen. How are you doing, my dear? Happy to see you. She says wonderful worship. We love you and we miss you. Glory to Jesus. 
Franz Greper says, I don't know the meaning of the song, but I can tell you by its rhythm, I'm being touched by something all over me. The one saying, ta, 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 what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> the one saying ta ta ta. Okay, Franz. Let me. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> uh, you have made us happy. Now, let me just explain to you what the song means. It's taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 15, and verse 4. Uh, so I'm going to actually almost transliterate. Yeah? So it's a song in Swahili, and Swahili is a language spoken in East Africa quite widely. And of course some parts of South Africa, people from Malawi speak a bit of Swahili, I think. Those who are uh, somewhat connected to, to Tanzania speak some Swahili. So when you hear the word ni nani, it means who. Asiye kucha, that means who will not fear, who will not fear you. E buona Yesu. That means, oh, Jesus, my Lord. Yeah? So I'm going to put the lyrics. In fact, we've already recorded the song. Mr. Buna recorded this yesterday. And the engineer was Mr. Mwema Nzomo. He does all manner of things. He's the one in charge of our media. He's the one in charge of these cameras, the graphic designs, and designing our websites. And He's also the one who plays the keyboard and he's also producing music together with Mr. Buller. They're both producers, both great musicians, you know. So I'm so blessed to have extraordinary talents around me. So Mr. Nzomo didn't sleep the previous night. Saturday night he didn't sleep. He recorded Mr. Buller. After that he mixed and mastered the song. By 7 in the morning they were doing the video. Right now he's editing the video. So very soon we're going to release the video and we'll put the Swahili lyrics and their English translation, all right? So the song really talks about who will not fear you, O oh Lord, uh, and that all nations will come and bow before you because your righteousness has been revealed. That's it, that's the meaning of the song. So the ta-ta-ta you're hearing is mataifa. That means all nations, yeah? Na mataifa yote. <laughs> How does it go, you guys? How does the song go again? There's a lot of ta ta ta. It's right. Yeah. You're right. Mataifa yote watakuja. You know that means all the nations will come. Yeah, glory to God. But I'm I'm glad you're blessed. This song caused me to weep yesterday when we were singing it during the Sunday service. And even to, tonight as we've been singing it, you know, I've just been weeping. Mm -hmm. There is a special anointing about it and we want to release it quickly. And when we do, please share it widely with your friends. You know, we release these songs for free. Mm -hmm. Okay? We, don't, we no longer sell songs. We just create them and just release them out there as part of our content for worshipping Jesus. I can see my little five-year-old girl is online. <laughs> she says, I love you. You are the best. I love you like I like my dad is the best in the whole wide world. Wow, I love you, Miss G. That's my Tiazo. I love you. You're the best in the whole wide world. Wow. Glory to Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Miss Gump tells me, Daddy, <laughs> speak a little louder. I can't, <laughs> I can't hear you properly. All right. Can you hear me now, my baby? <laughs> Jathan says he's watching open heavens. Glory to Jesus. All right, I'm going to start teaching about uh, all my wisdom in a short while. But let me just enjoy talking to you guys and reading your comments mm -hmm. together with my beautiful wife here. Cheers. Rona says, I received my triple income in Jesus' name. That's right. Lydia Mora, she's receiving her job. Yes, it's going to happen. Glory to God, my dear, beautiful one. Christine Jiroge says, I'm doing fine. So glad to know. Hallelujah. Miss Gabba sent me those beautiful love hearts. Oh, I love you. Best friends forever, she says. <laughs> wow, glory to Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. Miss G, how are you able to type these things? You're fine. <laughs> these kids amaze me. All right, anyway, can we go on to the word of God? Jesus is wonderful. I want to teach you. Oh my goodness, I'm still weeping here. <laughs> Jesus wants you rich. You first must develop the mindset of a rich person. 
You need to think like a rich person, talk like a rich person, act like a rich person, dress like a rich person, eat like a rich person. Rich people don't eat too much. Ah, you need to know that. Eat like a rich person. Eating too much is a sign of scarcity mentality. It's a sign that you feel like things are not enough to go around. So you stuff yourself with food. That's not the nature of a rich person. A rich person eats a little, just a little. Enough for you to get nutrition and energy. You don't stuff yourself until it's impossible to walk. All right. So you got to do things like a rich person. Talk like a rich person. I've taught you to be astios, to be urbane, to be so highly refined and to have the confidence of a wide social uh, knowledge. You understand? And experience. That's how rich people are. There's a way they carry themselves around that attracts revenue. And you need to start doing that. But I want to teach you about Orma wisdom, which is wisdom for frugality and the wisdom that makes you frugal and thrifty. The wisdom that enables you to avoid wasting things. And the same wisdom enables you to thrive in every single thing you do. So to be frugal is to avoid waste. I'm not saying to be tight-fisted and to be a miser. That's not frugality. That's just foolishness. A frugal person is the one who knows when to spend money and when not to spend money. They know when to invest and when not to invest. They know when to buy shares and when to sell shares. They know when to call, they know when to put, if you understand the stock exchange language and terminology. Amen. A fat person who is frugal knows when to lend money and when not to lend money. When to borrow money, when not to borrow money. They know how to use their money the right way. A frugal person doesn't go to the supermarket and then just starts to buy things that are planned. A frugal person must plan the amount of money they must spend when they go to a supermarket or a shopping mall. A frugal person tends to eat mostly at home, especially because food cooked at home is of better nutritional value. They only eat outside the house once in a while, maybe once a week or once in two weeks or whatever. Not that they can't afford a good meal in a restaurant. No, it's because they understand the purpose of food. It's not just for entertainment, it's also for your nutrition, it's for your immune system, it's for your longevity, it is for building up your life in the physical way. So if it's cooked at home, it is cooked the right way using the right ingredients and the right cooking fat and all those other things and the right amount of salt and, and the right amount of everything so that your body as the temple of the Spirit of God is well preserved for the work God wants you to do on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Are you getting that? I feel the Spirit of God. My daughter is speaking tongues. She says, Kanao, Kanao, Kanaab. Glory to Jesus. That's beautiful, Miski. She's on a roll. <laughs> she tells me I have to stop now. I would like to go and play. All right, my dear. Go ahead and play. You're so cute and so beautiful. Daddy and mommy love you. We love you so much. Now you can go and play, okay? While I preach. God called babies to play. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. All right. So to be frugal and to be thrifty is knowing when to use money and when not to use money. And to be thrifty is knowing how to grow financially. So the wisdom that enables you to be frugal and thrifty is called Arma Wisdom. O-R-M-A-H. Arma Wisdom. If you declare, I have Arma Wisdom, then this wisdom is activated in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask my beautiful wife to help me read from the book of Proverbs 8 and verse 12. Actually, read for me from Proverbs 8 verse 5 first, then we go to verse 12. Proverbs 8 verse 5 and then we'll go to verse 12 so that I can explain what Arma wisdom is according to Holy Scriptures. This way, by the time I'm done, you'll have got the impartation and the anointing that enables you to make the right decisions with money and how to cause your money to multiply in the name of Jesus. I taught yesterday that everything has codes. There are codes for finances. So every Monday, I give you financial codes. If you take the words, I give you seriously every Monday, you'll understand that these codes work. All right? A person who doesn't have a pin code works too hard and sweats too much. But a person with a pin code merely needs to press a couple of buttons and everything opens up. And this is what I'm teaching you. 
frugality and being thrifty is one of those codes you need to have. It is called the Orma code. Wisdom is a code. Anytime someone uses wisdom, they're using a code that opens up things that hitherto for were blocked or unopened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please read for me the book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 5. All ye simple, understand wisdom. All ye simple, understand wisdom. Carry on. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. So the Bible says if you did have wisdom in finances, if you are simple, the Bible says understand. The word understand there is have discernment. Bina. And the word wisdom there is orma. So he says, oh, he is simple. So what is the word simple there in Hebrew? Because if you go to Hebrew, then you'll find a deeper meaning, okay? A person who is, a, who is naive, you know, simplicity, naivet. A person who is stupid, in other words. No. One who is so naive, they don't know what's going on around them. They are so financially naive, they are easy to con. They're so financially naive, they don't know how money is made. They just wish they had a lot of it. But if you teach them how it's made, it somewhat doesn't really get to settle in. And the Bible says the solution to naivet, or being simple, is to have bina, which is discernment, because money is a spiritual thing, and you need to know how to discern spirit for money to come your way. How does one develop discernment? When you talk in tongues, you activate your ability to discern. Mm -hmm. The same way you can look at somebody and discern that there's something wrong with a person. Mm -hmm. You can discern that there is this guy's not a good person. You can look and see, ah, he doesn't look like a person that's trustworthy. That's a gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. The same way you can discern a good business deal. You can discern a place where the spirit that controls money is operating. And that discernment comes when you hear messages like these. When you interact with people who are rich, people who have made it financially. When you interact with them, you start developing their kind of habits. You see, sometimes people come close to me, they want to interact with me, and when they find that my habits are not the usual kind of habits, they find it difficult and some of them drop off. For example, if you, if you interact with me a lot, you'll find I don't eat much. Now, if you're a person given to appetite, can, can we just read a scripture yes. for people given to appetite? Mm -hmm. I'm a king, okay? Kings rule and reign. So take me to Proverbs 16. I want to teach you how to be to be frugal, okay? If you're a person given to appetite and you hang up around me a lot, you'll find that I don't eat much. And that might make you feel uncomfortable because I'm not going to satisfy your desire for food. Rather, I will satisfy your desire for wisdom. That's what I satisfy mostly. When you come around me, I'll teach you the word of God. You will forget to eat because I'll continue teaching you what works. So Proverbs chapter 16, what does it say from verse 1? Thank you, Jesus. The preparation of the heart in man mm -hmm. and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The preparations of the heart of man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Now, what did it take me to verse... Um, uh, Paris de Lebro Cota Liba Se Prolicra Bante Leri Mostaman I don't think it's Proverbs 16. Let's, no, hold on. Let me just look for it. Yeah, let me look for it. Yeah. Help me look for the scripture that talks about how to handle yourself when you're in the presence of the rich. That if you're given to appetite, put a knife on your neck. I'm trying to look for that scripture. If you know it, please type it out. You type it out there for me quickly so that we save time. Okay? It is possibly that verse you see, but just look it up. Yeah? The Bible says in the in Proverbs, my wife is helping me, helping me get it, that when a rich man invites you for a meal, calebre sila prakate, when a rich man invites you for a meal, I'm talking about being frugal, avoiding waste, and then they put their dainty before you. The Bible says if you're a person given to appetite, watch your appetite, because his heart is not with you. As he thinketh in, it, in himself, so is he. That a time will come when you'll vomit all the nice dainties that you had eaten. Because his heart is not really with you. As he thinketh in himself, so is he. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Yeah? Can you help me look for it? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay? If you know that scripture, just type it up for me quickly. Yes. <clears throat> Glory to God. Excuse me, huh? Exactly, that's the one. It's Proverbs 23. I went to Proverbs 16, verse 3, when it's Proverbs 23. Just read it for me. 
When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, if you sit to eat with a ruler or a rich man, same word, consider diligently what is before you. Look at the things set before you, consider them diligently. So if I take you to a restaurant, consider diligently what is before you. If um, eating with you at the same table, consider diligently what's before you. Why? Because I'm a king, I'm a ruler, I'm a rich man. Mm. So when you're dealing with a rich man, you need to understand how to develop their habits. Watch the habits of rich people so that you get codes for finances. Glory to God. If you eat like a poor person, the rich people will avoid you. When they avoid you, it will be difficult for you to connect to the things rich people do. You see that? You're going to learn to eat like a rich man or a rich woman. So what does the Bible say in verse 2? It says, put a knife to your throat. Put a knife to your throat. Uh -huh. If you are a man given to appetite. If you have a high appetite. In other words, that day, don't eat much. Unless the king tells you, hey, spoil yourself. If the king says, I'm the one spoiling you today. I'm the one giving you the dainties. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. The way King Zaxxas invited all his lords from out of all 120 provinces. And they had a party for six straight months. Can you believe it? They ate every single day for six straight months. And the Bible says nobody was compelled to eat or to drink beyond what they wanted. Nonetheless, the king still watches to see how you handle food. Ladies and gentlemen, food is, is a place where you're caught. All right? Food is the place where most people are found out. So the way you handle food will determine whether all my wisdom is with you or not. And the Bible says if you're given to appetite, put a knife to your throat. If you're given to appetite, what does verse 3 say, baby? Be not desirous of his dainties. Do not be desirous of his dainties. For they are deceitful meat. Because they are deceitful meat. Ladies and gentlemen, all rich people will test you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know they can't just trust anyone with money. Mm -hmm. But most of all, they can't just trust anyone with codes. Codes are nuggets of wisdom that enable you to make money. They can't trust somebody who will make money and then the money destroys them. They can't trust somebody who after they make money, their character changes. They can't trust somebody who after making money becomes boastful and wasteful. That's why we're talking about being frugal. All rich people are frugal. That's why whenever you go to a rich person and you ask for one dollar, they refuse to give you one dollar. You may say, but you look at you. You bought a drink worth, what, three hundred dollars. A drink. And then you gave it away. A man's asking for a dollar. The rich man will tell you no. I'll only give you a dollar if you work. Work worth a dollar. They are frugal. They don't waste money. So when you're the rich person, they will test you. Every moment with a rich person is a test. Your job is to keep passing those tests. Once you pass the test, then they will start funding your project. They'll make you a partner in business. Once you pass tests, rich people will test you consistently. Well, you see, it's taken me quite some time to create, my wife and I, it's taken us quite some time to create fortunes. And you're not just about to hand fortunes to somebody who is going to mess it up in a matter of months. You see, you can take 20 years to build something and some foolish fellow who doesn't have all my wisdom destroys it in two or three months. So before I trust you even to work for me or to work with me, I will test you. I will test to see, especially one of the biggest tests I subject people to is the test of food. I want to see if you're given to appetite. If you're given to appetite, I cannot trust you with money. All right. The one who can control their appetite will also control their financial appetite. So you've got to understand this. And the Bible says that don't be desirous of his dentists. So when a rich person buys you expensive food, be careful. What a, don't be desirous. What's the word desire there? Read, read it for me in Hebrew. Ava. Ava, it means to last. Okay? Ava. Okay? Do not last after his dainties. Dainties are delectable condiments. Things that taste nice to the tongue. They smell good to the nose. 
They are so savory. You want to sample them. But the Bible says don't. He is not with you. He is testing you. He is testing your financial appetite. Not your appetite for food. No. He is using food to test your financial appetite. Let me mm. take you deeper. Mm. A gentleman called Esau lost his heritage, his wealth, because of his appetite. Mm. He saw red pottage that Jacob was making. And he, he completely despised the fact that all the wealth that belonged to Abraham was his. He despised that. He went for food instead. Instead of going for food, please say, can you postpone that eating thing and just continue giving me nuggets of wisdom? When you do that to a rich person, they begin to trust you. After that, they'll even force you, come on, let's go and eat. You've already passed the test. You see, Esau never passed the test of food. All right, let me take you right to the beginning. Where did Adam and Eve fail? In the area of food. They were given something to eat. And they bequeath the entire universe to the devil as a result of their appetite. If you want all my wisdom to come your way, control your appetite. Mm. Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Control your appetite. That's why we keep telling you, we are fasting for three days. We are fasting. Rich people like to fast. <laughs> fast, fast, fast. It does not mean we don't enjoy our food. We do. Mm. But but look, enjoy your food after you've made some money for yourself, my dear. Don't spend the heritage of your father on food. Yeah. Huh? Don't spend your heritage on food. The Bible says because of a morsel of meat. Yeah, the Bible says, lest there be a fornicator. You see, fornication is always directly proportional to appetite. A person who likes to eat a lot you'll also find that they are immoral in their conduct. Eating. The Bible says, ah, let me just take you deep. The Bible says they ate, they drank, and rose up to fornicate. They ate, they drank, and rose up to play. They ate, they drank, and rose up to play. In other words, they got into orgies. When the Israelites left Egypt, and Moses went up the mountain, and Aaron made a golden calf for them, the Bible says they ate first and then they drank. Then they got up and started dancing naked and they started committing fornication. About 20,000 of them had to be killed as a result. That is where Levi, he went and because of the anger of the Lord in him, he went and got the, the people that were in an orgy. Levi went and killed them. For that reason, the curse of their father was removed from him. Because Levi and Simeon were cursed because of their anger. Remember how they went and killed the Shechemites when they had raped Dinah, when Shechem had raped Dinah. And Levi and Simeon went, got them circumcised, and when they were feeling so the third day, he went and killed the whole country. They killed the whole country. Because of their anger, their father cursed them. But when they went and destroyed those who were fornicating, after eating and drinking, then the Lord removed the curse because of their passion. For the house of God. Yeah. So in the in Genesis, food was used to take somebody's heritage. And in the uh, when the Israelites left Egypt, it is food and drink that messed them up. Yeah. Esau and Jacob, even before the nation of Israel was made, yeah. Esau lost his heritage, his money, his wealth because of his appetite. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob stole a blessing from Esau because he satisfied the father's appetite with food. Oh Jesus. Are you getting me? If you're a person given to appetite in the presence of rich people, don't. Let me tell you, often I'm invited to presidential suites to meet ambassadors and presidents. And sometimes they ask me to play my saxophone for them. And sometimes I go with uh, my colleague, my partner in business called Judy. And my wife is usually, of course, the executive. She's the one who handles all these things. Do you know what happens? When you have a cocktail party with the rich, the president and the ambassadors, it is cucumbers that they cut in small bits and pieces, and celery, and some nuts. And then you're given a cocktail made of gold. You get that? 
all right you're given a cocktail made of you know with gold gold dust literally gold dust sprinkled and that's given to you at the entrance and it's it's a flute it's not even a goblet you know what a flute is a flute is this very small glass that is used for serving mostly effervescent drinks okay so they give you a flute with a cocktail and it's mixed with gold so that's what you sip on while you're eating some of these ex exotic nuts and celery and cucumber that's been cut in bits and pieces and you dip it into a certain sauce that's what you eat now you if you're given to appetite you'll sit there thinking where is the main course where is the main course where is the main course so you should have eaten at home when you're gonna meet a rich person eat at home let me just deliver some of you. Food is what messed Adam and Eve. Food is what messed Esau. Food is what messed the Israelites. Food, food, food. And Jesus declared that we should eat his body and drink his blood. Food is what enters you into a covenant with your Savior. Glory to Jesus. Oh my God. Food. Food, food, food. Food, glorious food. That's it. <laughs> Are you getting me? So, you're eating cucumbers. You know, they like eating salads and things like that. And a few nuts. And it's served in the smallest container. And this flute is almost like 50 ml. You know? <laughs> you're sipping a golden drink with real gold dust. And you're eating these little things. And in the meantime, you're discussing economies of the world. Economies of nations. You're discussing millions of dollars while you're just nibbling here, nibbling there with some entertainment. After that, everybody says, all right, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Let's meet again next month to eat again little things. That's why you're told to put a knife on your neck if you're given to what? Appetite. Because his dentists are what? Deceptive. What's the word deceptive there? Verse 3. Kazab. It is not true. It's a deceptive thing. They use food to deceive you. The same way the devil used food to deceive Adam and Eve. All rich people act like that. Ha! <laughs> Today you're looking at me. I can see the way your eyes are looking at me. Oh my God. They're looking at me interestingly. <laughs> Alright, let's carry on. What does the Bible say? That food is deceitful. Alright? It is deceitful. The Bible says... <laughs> You will vomit out all those things. That every nice word you spoke to the man, you will have to take them back. Because the guy's heart is not with you. The guy's heart is with how you handle money. And how you handle food determines how you handle money. So if you're the type that eats half of your food and then you throw the rest of it out, you are tr you, that's not frugality. You've not yet got all my wisdom. Are you the kind of a person who eats and you just leave your plate there? You don't clear up. That means you don't know economy. It means your books will be all over the place. Your financial books will be a mess. You don't know how to justify your accounts. After eating, clear up. Alright? After clearing up, wash up. That's how all rich people are. Rich people will go to the kitchen and cook for you. Or they'll serve you tea. They want to serve you. They love to serve because that's how they make money. Poor people love to be served. Are you getting that? Rich people are hands-on. They want to do things. And they want, you find them washing things. Are you getting me? But a poor person wants to sit on a leather seat like this. They want to lean back, cross their legs, and they want to click their fingers like this to be served. No, those are drug lords. Drug lords are not rich people. All right? A rich person is a person who has heritage. Drug lords don't have heritage. There's nothing to be given as bequest. There's nothing they bequeath to anybody. When they die, they die with their wealth. Pablo Escobar died. You should now see the mansions he had built. They're overgrown with trees. They look like waste. So there was no frugality there. The fact that somebody has a lot of money and they're throwing it all over the place, doesn't make them rich. That's not wealth. Wealth will outlive you. Glory to God. Are you getting it? So let's go back to the book of Proverbs 8 verse 5. Then we'll go to Proverbs 8 verse 12. So that you learn how to be a person who is frugal and thrifty. Okay. 
The Bible says, before you are trusted with a lot, you must be trusted with a little. So if you have five dollars, the way you use your five dollars will determine how you're going to use fifty dollars or five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars. So if you think that a little amount of money given to you is too small, then you've missed the point. So what does it say again? All you simple, you who have not been intelligent in finances, understand orma. All ye fools, be you an understanding heart. So if you don't know how to use money, to that extent the Bible says you are a fool financially. But if you get all my wisdom, then you become a person of knowledge. A person of excellence when it comes to the things of God and finances. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now let's go to the book of Proverbs 8 verse 12. What does it say? Proverbs 8 verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence. I wisdom, now the word wisdom there is hokma. Hokma is the highest level of wisdom amongst the Jews. Now, hokma wisdom is wisdom for administration. It is wisdom for religion, wisdom for ethics. It is wisdom for war. It teaches you how to win. You know, we have, do you know we have business wars? Do you know what marketing is all about? Marketing is how you win a business war. So you have a competitor who is selling the very same product. The way you brand and market will cause people to like your product much more than the competition. So uh, uh, Hokma wisdom is the wisdom that enables you to win such battles. Not only do you win spiritual battles in Hokma, you also win economic battles in Hokma. So you become a market leader, the one who, who wins the battles of success in the marketplace. You get that? So the Bible says that kind of wisdom called Hokma wisdom dwells with another type of wisdom called Orma wisdom. So I hokma wisdom for uh, battle, winning wars, wisdom for administration. You need to have proper administrative skills for you to make money. Wisdom for computation, accounting, planning. That's what hokma is. The ability to account, compute, to plan. All right. The ability to do mathematics, adding and subtracting and dividing and and multiplying your finances. That is called Hokma. And the Bible says that wisdom called Hokma, and I'm going to teach you in details about it in the future. I mentioned it many, many months ago, but I can bring it up again. That kind of wisdom is significant when used alongside what? Orma wisdom. And the Bible says when you have those two types of wisdom, then you shall come up with witty inventions. Just read a bit more. And find. I wisdom dwell with prudence. I hawk my wisdom. Wisdom for war, for administration, wisdom for computation, for accounting, for planning, wisdom for ethics. You see, if you're in business, you must learn ethos. You must be an ethical person. Because unethical business practices will get you out of business very fast. Okay? Going for shortcuts, things that are not ethical, will get you out of business really fast. So, you need to be a person of ethics, Hokma. And the Bible says Hokma and Orma, which is frugality and being thrifty, avoiding waste and thriving, they work together. When you combine them together, then you'll come up with what? Witty inventions. inventions. I hope you're getting something out of this. Witty inventions. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Now let's look at the book of Proverbs 1, um, verse 4. And then I'll be done. Proverbs 1, verse 4. Erima sala prakute le brinda supradia. It says, to give subtlety to the simple. To give subtlety to the simple. That word subtlety there is orma. Now the same word subtlety is the word the serpent used in the Garden of Eden to beguile Eve. So people of Orma wisdom are subtle. They are crafty in a way. They, they have the, the smartness that enables them to outwit competition. So the serpent outwitted Adam and Eve and got the estate from them. You see, this is the wisdom some con men use in a negative way. They outwit you and then they take your money. But now for you to compete in the marketplace, you need to be a person who can outwit your competition. When you go to pitch 
for funding, you need to be a person with a tongue that will cause another rich person to part with money. Because it's difficult to get a rich person to part with money. It's difficult. Because they understand financial principles and the codes of finances. So if you keep using the wrong code, you keep losing. The day you use the right code is the day you'll get money from a rich person. You get that? And I'm teaching you the codes. Codes are easy. They're not complicated. They're not difficult. Mm. Hallelujah. So, to give what? That will teach you the simple. Okay, can we take it from verse 3? To receive the instruction of wisdom. To receive the instruction of wisdom. What is the Hebrew word of, for wisdom there? Sakal. Sakal. Sakal is the kind of wisdom that gives you good success. It is found in the book of Joshua 1 verse 8. That... It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it there and day and night, so that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then shall you have, you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Good success. The word good success, success there is sakal. So the Bible says, let's go back to the Bible, to the verse, to receive the instruction of sakal, good success, justice and judgment and equity. These are things that you use in economics, equity and stuff like that. And then this wisdom, which is still hokma, gives subtlety or orma to the simple. So what a person who is foolish in finances needs is orma wisdom. What a person who is simple in financial matters needs is orma wisdom. And that's what I'm giving you tonight. Receive it in Jesus' name. And the Bible says to the young man, knowledge and discretion. What is discretion? Discretion is your ability to make choices, to make judgments the right way. Freedom to judge. That's discretion. It also means the ability to know what to say and what not to say. The ability to keep secrets. That's discretion. The ability to know when, when not to talk about classified information. Now fools will just open their mouth and talk anyhow. Your mouth will either cause you to gain favor with a rich person or to lose favor. So you must learn what to say to a rich person. If you speak things that are not the right codes, you'll clash with a rich person all the time. You'll ever be clashing, ever be clashing, because you're not using the right codes. You get that? Rich people know that words are equal to money. They also know that time is equal to money. So if you mismanage time, you'll clash with a rich man. Okay? If you mismanage your words, you'll clash with a rich man. Learn the right things to say. How do you learn them? By listening keenly to how the rich person talks. When we are dealing and trading, we are rough. If you are a person who is poor, you'll find I'm being too harsh when I'm dealing and trading. So you may want to tell me to tone down. That is foolishness. You're already speaking things that are wrong codes. For that reason, the rich man will not take you to their next business deal. Listen to me. Rich people will test you all the time. If I want to test whether I can trust you with a thousand dollars, the first thing I do is I'll take you to a place where I'm buying mangoes or oranges. And you'll find me putting up a fight over the mangoes or the oranges. The way you respond will make me realize you're poor in the mind. So next time I'm going to buy a camera, for example, or something a bit more expensive, I will not carry you along because you're going to bring the wrong codes when I'm transacting. You get that? Oh my God. Rich people are not easy to understand. So listen more to them than you talk. Don't try to give advice to a rich person. Do you know why? The only advice you can give to a rich person is how to be broke if you're broke. The only, rich, the only thing you can tell a rich person if you're poor is how to become poor. You get that? So more often than not, the Bible says, if you're given to appetite, control your appetite. If you're given to too much talk, control your talking. There's no advice you can give to somebody who has more money than you in terms of finances. All right. So you're going to be humble enough to realize you're dealing with somebody much greater than you, much higher than you in everything. So the best you can do is learn from them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. The best you can do is learn from them, not advise them on how to do things. If your advice worked, it would have worked for you by now. 
So cut off your advice. It's not required. It's not needed. If a rich man asks you for your advice, then do what a certain gentleman called Ezekiel did. Yeah? Remember the valley of dry bones? God asked Ezekiel. It was Ezekiel, wasn't it? Yes. What did God ask Ezekiel? Honey? He asked him, um, son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, can these bones live? Was God asking him that question because he didn't know? No. This is a test. Even God tests people. You know how the man of God answered? He said, only you know. I'd rather hear it from you. Wisdom. Codes. I'd rather hear it from you. So, God will bring rich people your way to teach you to become rich. But your big mouth will mess things up. And your big appetite. Big mouth and big appetite. It will mess things up. So the rich person will start treating you like a poor person. So they will start hiding some information from you. Oh my God. They'll know if I give this person this kind of information, they'll use it the wrong way because their mouth is not bridled. Their tongue is not bridled. Are you getting it? If you've been like that, turn around tonight and you'll find yourself making money really quickly. Glory to Jesus. I'm done. God bless you. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for watching. I hope you've got all my wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. No wasting. Don't be given to appetite. Don't talk too much in the presence of a great person. There are certain mistakes people make in the presence of greatness. Great people are extremely easy to work with. The reason they make money is because they make things easy. It's easy to talk to them it's easy to relate to them as well. That's why they make life easy for people by creating witty inventions. They invent things that make it easy for people to work. Rich people are not complicated, but make no mistake in their being easy. They're extremely wise and smart and they can pick up a waster in a short time. They'll engage you in a conversation and they know you're a wasteful person. So they won't trust you in some areas. They'll pick up a conversation with you and they'll know this one doesn't plan. This one, the life is not organized, so they won't trust you in some areas. They'll pick up a conversation with you and they'll know this one does not value time. And remember, time is defined as an occurrence, an occasion, an experience, and fortune. To a rich person, time is fortune. So if you don't use your time the right way, they won't trust you with some things. A rich person will give you a responsibility. And based on how you handle that responsibility, less but they got connected to me on somebody's watch party so pray those watch parties in the mighty name of jesus i love you so much have a wonderful evening wonderful morning wonderful day i look forward to seeing you tomorrow to teach you on prophetic codes you see i'm always teaching about codes and if you apply those codes they'll work for you in jesus name bye 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 we love you love you